Hey guys, it's me, your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and welcome back to the in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring. So we're going to start today's episode off just a little bit differently. We are here, sat down at the round table, and my HUD is off, because I just want to talk to you guys face to face for a second. Just you and me. I wanted to say thank you for the overwhelming amount of positive feedback that you guys have been providing me since the start of this series. I've been reading through all of your comments and responding to as many of you as I can, and the sincerity and the supportiveness of what you guys are telling me in the comments has been uh, very wholesome and inspiring. I've also been paying a lot of attention to my analytics lately, and the amount of engagement that I've been getting from this series, like the views and the subscriptions and everything else, still doesn't seem real to me every time I look at it, because all of my arrows are green. I am up hundreds and hundreds of percent in every category, versus how my channel usually does. And it's mind-blowing. So, I wanted to take a second and uh, use a block of time at the beginning of this video just to say thank you to you guys, and thank you for supporting me and uh, sharing my content, showing your friends, and everything else that you guys do that helps spread my content. As your host, it has been an absolute privilege to be able to play this game for you guys, and to bring you with me on this adventure. And I'm really glad you're here. So. HUD is coming back on. Touchy-feely time is over. Except it's not. It never is. I'm always glad you guys are here. Well, why don't we get into the episode? So we're going to start today's episode by allocating these levels appropriately. And I put a lot of thought into this. I didn't want to just blow all these runes that we got from killing the giant grail elder dragon. And it's just like random stats, you know, I don't want to like mess up my build or anything. I want these stats to have purpose. I looked at a lot of the stuff that's going to become available to us at uh, these earlier points in the game, and I want to put these stats into things that are going to uh, allow us to use the things that we want on this build earlier, like certain incantations, weapons, stuff like that. So I'm going to allocate these in a way that makes sense to what I want to do. And I think what I'm going to do is I will take my Endurance up to 14. And I think the rest is just going to go into Dexterity. Just like maybe two points, you know. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of changing my mind now because I think this probably makes more sense. 16 Vigor is plenty. 18 might be just a little too much, but there are a couple incantations I can think of that are going to need 18 faith right off the bat. Like, I know darkness is going to require that much, and so will lightning bolt. Or lightning spear, I guess it's called. Um, we're not going to get that for a minute, but I want to have the available faith right now. So I can use it, because I know we're going to pick it up relatively soon. So this looks good to me. If you're following along with my character and trying to do a similar build, and if you did the Elder Dragon Grail cheese in the last video, and you end up with the same amount of runes and you're trying to be you're about the same level as I am right now, this is about what I'm going for. We'll do 16 Vigor, 16 Mind, because we want a little bit more FP. I want to try to get like 100 as soon as possible because one of the, one of the Spirit Ashes that I want to use in particular is going to need at least 100 FP. So... We'll do 14 Endurance, because that way we'll be able to increase our equip load, so when the time comes and we get better equipment, better armor, we won't be too heavy, or they won't be too heavy for us, and we can still have, a, like, at least a medium roll. And then we can also equip bigger, heavier weapons as well, without fat rolling. And then I'm going to leave Strength and Dexterity alone, because these are okay for now. Our Dexterity is plenty high. And then I don't need any intelligence because I'm not going to be using sorceries. And then our faith, we'll put it 18 because one incantation we will immediately be able to use with 18 faith is darkness. And it's going to be super useful in Stormvale. 
And I'm not going to touch Arcane, because I'm not really interested in using any weapons or incantations at scale with Arcane. Not on this build. So these are going to be the stats that I go with. And we'll go ahead and spend these runes, and it's going to leave me with just 500 or so. Not bad. We had pretty much exactly enough to get a good jump. So we are now level 41, and the difference on our playthrough is going to be immense because of this. I do have a free slot open, and I think I'm going to equip Darkness, just so we can have it on our character. This I don't necessarily need so much because I'm not worried about fall damage, and if I want to be stealthy I can just sneak, but it's better than just about anything else available to me at the moment, so I'm going to keep it on just in case we need to be real assassiny. But other than that, I think we're ready to rock. So today, I want this episode to be exciting. So what we're going to do is we're going to warp back down to Tombsward, which is the cave that we got the grace at. And then somebody said that there was a cave on the way to the Erd Tree that I missed. And so I want to go back down through through here a little bit. I'm not going to waste too much time, but after we smash Tomb's Word, I'm going to run back through there just to see if I can find the cave that they're talking about. Well, I don't... I don't need Torrent. That's weird. I could have swore I grabbed the Grace in there. I guess I can't warp to it. How strange. I learned something every time I play this, I'm telling you. Like, I feel like I covered quite a bit in my regular playthrough, but I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know why I can't warp to the grace that we got in here. I'm learning something new. We're gonna have to... We're gonna have to dive into this a little bit when we get in here and try to figure out what the cause is. Let's see what the difference is between this cave and other caves. So here's the grace. Okay, we lit it, because it's giving it, giving us the option to... Okay, here's what I need to do. I... We'll use this one. I recommend doing this 100%. Because the lantern is completely superior to the torch, because it doesn't take up a shield slot, and it gives you almost the same... Um, it illuminates almost the same amount of area. I recommend putting it on one of your pouch items so that way you don't have to scroll through it in your inventory you don't have to look for it on your hot bar you can just hold your top button and press the direction of whatever you have the lantern on give me some cave moss so i'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you guys here i don't recall what's in this cave the hell are you oh uh, there's poison in here Yep, yep, yep. Hooey, I don't have the book that cures the poison. So. Change plans. Well, I, I, you know, let's see how much damage we do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do... Plenty of damage, so I can avoid the poison. It's just fine, and we have plenty of bolts. Oh, yeah. That guy, he lost over half of his health when he got hit. That's why he looked at me and was like, I'm dead anyway. Just finish me. He knew. So, okay. It's all coming back to me. I'm starting to remember. Well, this is nice and easy. These guys are two bolts apiece, and they're dead. And, I mean, they don't do anything. I'll tell you what they do, which I don't really want to, like, showcase what they do, because it's super annoying, but they will send little miniature poison clouds at you. And it doesn't have very good range, like, if you're over where I am, it won't even reach you. So, we're, like, 100% cheesing these guys down hard. Okay, when they're that far away, it takes three, but that is merely because of the distance. Let me see what other kind of bolts I have. I do not want my black key bolts equipped. Because these are good. They cost scarlet rot. And we do not want to waste that on these small fries. So my secondary bolts 
are going to be the Lord Sworn ones, because they have slightly higher attack than the ones that I'm using in my main slot. So these regular bolts, physical is 50, it's 65 for the Lord Sworn bolts, so we'll save that for slightly tougher enemies that need just a little more damage. So, pro tip when you're running through the poison here, don't roll. Do not roll when you're in the poison, because then you'll be caked in it, and surprisingly there's a mechanic in this game where when you're caked in the poison, the buildup doesn't just go away. It's uh, huge pain. This huge pain in the ass. Oh, would you look at that? We've got slimes, and I have zero ability to hit them with my fireball. Apparently, hello. Wow. Okay. Thank you. How about a firepot? Okay, that did real good. <laughs> firepot might be the answer for those guys because firepots don't cost any FP. So. Watch the ceiling in this place. Like, you saw that guy. He dropped straight down from the ceiling. Sometimes you can pick them out on the ceiling because they'll be moving. Sometimes they will not. Sometimes it's very tricky to see them before they drop down. That's why I suggest you loot stuff in motion. Okay. Poison buildup is... Yep, one just dropped down right there. The poison buildup is not super bad on us right now because we have this nice confessor armor. It's uh, it's pretty good. Okay, we got fires, or we got plants here. Fire is really good for these guys, but I mean, I ain't worried about it. We've got a really good weapon. This flail destroys. So, these guys, use your lock-on. They're alive. Here's what I'll do. I'm gonna pull one at a time. Be smart about this. Well, I guess we can just keep using our regular strategy and just shoot on the crossbow. So there's our little homing poison cloud thing. I mean, you can kind of just like roll out of the way. You know, it's pretty easy to get away from. These guys have the mushroom outfit on, which, or I don't think it's called the mushroom outfit. I think it's called like the fungus outfit or something like that. But uh, it's very strange. It's kind of interesting. And we're going to get it. We're going to end up getting it in uh, one of these caves. Poison bone darts. Okay. Those are useful for poisoning your enemies, but we will very likely use them more so for like a pulling tool. Because the more throwing items you have on you, <clears throat> the easier it is to control every situation. Because, I mean, I... I know everybody has their own style of how they want to play these games, and not everybody enjoys playing them the same, you know? Like, really passive and uh, cautious gameplay may not be enjoyable at all for some of you. But uh, then there are others who do prefer to be more passive and uh, prefer to have... Yeah, giant rat. Okay, I need to, like, get out of this poison before it procs. Can I, like... Oh, fuck. Alright, whatever. Barricade shield, here we go. No. Okay, yeah, these guys are not going down in one hit. <clears throat> Shit. Whoa, I'm blocking, bro. Thank you. Heal? Heal? Never mind. Okay. <laughs> that was weird. Alright, anyway. Um, trying to think what I could have done differently there to not die and it's because I was worried about the poison I guess I let the poison see and that's oh it is right here okay wow I feel silly for some reason I like when I looked at the map it made me think it was like it made me think it was like up in this direction for some reason okay that's weird anyway we'll get our lantern out I really should have learned my lesson back there and uh, I should buy the book that allows you to create the uh, the item that cures poison which the name of it escapes me but oh fuck off alright here's what we're gonna do I'm not worried about getting my runes back because it was like what 1100 something like that it's silly I'm just gonna run past these guys and pick these up Yeah, I don't have anything that can actually, like, get rid of the poison or anything, and I don't have the, uh, I don't have the 
the incantation that cures it either, which it is available. Like, we 100% could have bought it back there at the round table hold, but I just find it easier to have the materials to craft the stuff. Alright. Damn. This fucking rat has poise, bro. Barricade shield, though. Nope. He ain't getting through this shield. Non barricade mode. Okay. And I'm poisoned, but like, whatever. I have plenty of healing items. I do want to go up here real quick. I know I'm going in the different direction away from our runes, but uh, I want to go grab this item up here while we're here. It'd be really cool if I could loot an item in here that would cure poison. Are you quite finished? Okay, there's our our leaf that we talked about. Okay. I'm gonna use my flask of physique just so I can have my bubble. Alright. Now for this part, drop down over on this side. Not the other one. Get rid of these flowers, and there's some guys over here in the in the poison. grab this item kill these guys last time but we don't need to this time the boss is gonna be down that way what I am gonna do clear some of these guys out okay these guys oh god get off yeah I'm dead I'm so dead <laughs> get off oh yeah Yep. <laughs> Man, I'm doing terrible in this episode. <laughs> yeah. Lesson learned. By the damn by the damn uh cookbook that gives you the poison cure item. It's uh it's the guy out on the beach just before we just before the cave that takes you to the dragon church. He's the one that sells it. And the game is telling me hardcore right now to go buy that book so I cannot suffer the same fate in here a third time, but I'm stubborn. So here's what I'm going to do. I don't care for the runes. They're not important to me. I mean, they are, but not that amount. We already killed that rat in there. Really? Oh, okay, I thought he was still alive even after two hits. I'm like, bruh. <laughs> no. You. Alright, now for the big boy. Barricade shield. Yeah! It hurts, don't it? <laughs> what the hell? I don't even know how that happened. Come on. Gotta kill you before the poison kills me. Okay, immunizing white cured meat. There we go, we got another cookbook. And don't worry, I know we're picking up a ton of these cookbooks, and it's probably hard to keep track of which ones are what, but, um... Hi. I'm not too worried about you, so I'm just gonna go this way. And here's what I'll do. Since we know where the boss is, we really don't have to fight our way through all this bullshit again. We can just drop down. We can run out of here. Go back to the grace, sit down, and we'll be all right. Okay. And then the boss is going to be pretty easy. We'll get rid of our poison. And I want to look through, see what we can make. Hey, there's a new one. We can do the, the poop pot. Great. All right. So let's go take the boss down. Which, I'm having a hard time 
I'm having a hard time remembering what the boss even is in this cave. It's could potentially be a giant flower. I really hope it's not the case because that's a sort of a disappointing fight. Alright, don't want that guy to land on me, so I'll hug the wall. Nope. Okay. Let's go time. Oh my goodness. Yep, flower. Yeah, you do your magic attack. That's fine. So, the flower can also be reposted. It will slam down like that sometimes, and if you get hit by that, it can send you flying. Like, it's just not good to get hit by that. <laughs> don't don't let it slam into you, but go for the repost when you get the opportunity, which I had it right there, but I lost it. And what you can do to get rid of the fire is this. If the pot is using the fire, or is using the poison attack, you can actually use a fire pot to almost completely negate it. And that attack does not cancel just because the flower dies. So, be mindful. And we got a medallion that will significantly raise our stamina. This one right here. Which, our source seal is so unbelievably superior to that, so we're not going to do it. But, alright. That dungeon took way too long to complete because... I was very sloppy. <laughs> I went in unprepared. Like, I fell into the exact trap that that dungeon was just waiting for an opportunity to snare me in. And that was the whole, okay, I'm gonna get poisoned if I don't rush through and find a spot to stand on, and then boom, giant rat, right? So, well played from soft. Well played. Well played. God, I feel like... I feel like I talk just fine until I'm recording these, and then suddenly... Suddenly my tongue is just like the dude from Kung Pao. Does anybody even remember that movie? Like, was that movie even real? Alright, so now we're going to go do the Impaler's Catacombs. Because we covered these, and that's kind of what I want to try to do in this episode, is I want to knock out some of these stray caves that we grabbed the graces at, but didn't actually go into. So let's rest. And we're going to have more kitty gargoyles in here. Yep. You should have stayed down there, bro. Man, so that's a new one. You have them clinging to the walls, and sometimes they drop down on the ceilings, but I don't think we have seen one climb over the edge yet. So, it's a new one. All right, before we bum rush this guy, let's make sure there's not another one that's going to climb over the edge or anything. Let's make sure we can just flat out murder him. Okay, the fork hatchet. That's a considered just like a hand axe type weapon, and it does cause bleed. So let's see what we're dealing with here. There's the, gonna be the boss gate. Wow, that guy aggroed kinda early. Well, we got another thrower. All right, gentlemen, let's do it. Oh, goodness. Woo! <laughs> See what I mean? This one in particular is, uh... Nice, we got the imp head, which is uh, the cat version. There's three different versions of this helmet, and the cat one raises your intelligence. Two points. It's very heavy, though. Head covering made from the largely unaltered head of an impish golem. Resembling a cat, it holds trace amounts of feline intelligence. Pretty cool. Um, you see uh, what I'm referring to? When I when I got to this point before, we did not even have Radagon's source seal. Like, we didn't have the big boost in all of our other stats. And, uh, if we had come in here to do this, we very much would have been dead back there because of the amount of damage that that blood loss did to us. So, 
I'm kind of glad we waited until after getting the source seal to try to get this place because even though it's still really difficult, like this catacombs is significantly tougher than the other one that we've already done. Like, these things hit way harder and uh, yeah, we don't do as much damage to them. Okay, and then we got another material to upgrade our spirit ashes. I'm always checking for hidden walls, man. Like, I I bet I've found a really good chunk of them in this game, but nowhere near all of them. Don't like this. It's too open. Oh, I remember this. <laughs> yep, if you stand on that, it will send you straight up into the spikes. <laughs> so, what you gotta do with this thing is you'll notice um, the entire room is closed off. There's no doors or anything, but there's an upper level up here where this gray violet is, and you just have to run for that. So, Come on. There we go. You guys probably can't see a damn thing. I'm going to fix that. There we go. All right. Now, what we're going to do... It's not a fake wall. Okay. got it <laughs> and uh, we can drop down in here there's an item down below there as well All right, who's down here who want to fight huh? give me that wow we're getting a lot of those Hey, we got zombie guys now. So, I know, dumbass. I know what's going on here. So, these guys, again, they have a really gnarly grab attack that can do a ton of damage. Like, don't let them grab you. <laughs> They'll run forward, and you'll know when they're going to grab you. But these guys have scarlet rot in them. That's what that red gas is. Oh, my God. Don't tell me they spawn infinitely. I'll be mad. Oh. Oops. Okay. Those do pretty well. Get them both. Damn it. Whatever. One of these guys just spawn infinitely? They're just coming out of the ground. Damn, alright. Fuck it. Alright, we got another uh, one of the carvings. I'll go over those a little bit later. Can't show them in the heat of the moment because I don't want to get grabbed and killed. But uh, those carvings allow you to com uh, communicate verbally with uh, other players and phantoms. And oh shit. Alright, let's just scale the outsides here not get grabbed, and uh, make sure we don't miss any of the items. Okay, so this appears to be where we need to go. Ah! That guy has yellow eyes. It means he's going to drop more runes, but I'm not worried about it, because these are senseless enemies that make no sense for us to fight. It's just a waste of time. We don't need to kill any of them in order to progress through the dungeon, so... I'm making an executive call choosing not to fight them. Okay, now the big door is going to be open near the boss. Are you serious? I have my shield up. Oh my... Did you see that? Hold on. Let me kill this guy and I'm going to point that out. So, that prompt was still on the screen, right? The thing that said that the, a large door opened somewhere? That was preventing me from blocking. Like, my... L1 button was not working because of that, so lesson learned. Clear your prompts. If there's a message on the screen that's trying to tell you something, clear it, because you won't be able to block or anything if you don't. So let's do this. Let me get my bubble. When we get in here, we'll summon the wolves. Come on, puppies. It's time. Oh, shit. Oh, you. 
So, this one's a little bit different. It's got three heads. Normally, they only have one. I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Oh! He, oh, goodness. These things move around so fast. There we go. Oh! Not good at all. <laughs> oh, God! Holy shit, I'm doing bad in this episode. <laughs> I'm not really sure what's going on. Wow, that sweep attack that he did, it like completely ignored my iframes. It did not give a shit that I rolled. Okay. Come on. My favorite way to handle them. Same thing as before. We'll run in here. We will use our wolves. Maybe our bubble if we have to. Come on then. What the hell? Why do I have my talisman out? That was weird. Ow. Oh wow, I do a lot of damage to this guy. <laughs> oh shit. Fuck. Are all my wolves dead? Shit. I ain't trying to get bled. Oh, come on. I swear, they scurry back at, like, the perfectly wrong time. There we go. You are, like, dead. Oh, fuck you. Oop. Shouldn't have done that. Alright. Let me heal real quick. Don't need the bubble yet. Um, hello. Shield. Alright, maybe it's bubble time. Shit. That's it. I'm beating your ass now. See? <laughs> I basically tanked an entire hit. That's hilarious. Oh, wow. Can I bleed him? Oh, that fire animation knocks you to the ground. Okay. Interesting. Come here, you. That's it. spin. There we go. So it looks like bleeding is not really an option for these guys. Okay. Then we got Demi Human Ashes. Is there anything else for us to pick up in here? Doesn't look like it. Alright. Wait! Bam. Root resin. I don't want to leave these behind. Okay. Let's go back to the entrance. So that's two really short caves that have been cleared. That are giving us far more trouble than what they should. 100%. So we cleared that one. Let's do a quick sweep here to see what we got. So let me go here. And we're going to do just a real quick sweep to look for the cave that we might have missed on the way to the Erd Tree. Because there was one person that pointed it out to me. So I would imagine it would have to be down there where like the bridge is, or close by at least. So we'll do that. And the safe place to drop down to get to that. Poop! Gold-tinged poop. 
is right here. Ish. Not like right here, right here. But here we go. This is where it leads down. Great. All right. Let's see what we got. I'll take the Trina's Lily. So we're going to need our sleepy time arrows. Okay, I imagine it would be somewhere right here because this is like the only spot we didn't really cover. Nope. Nope. I don't care if two of you were considered a boss at one point. You're weak. Give me my mushroom. It's not yours anymore, it's mine now. So right here, somewhere? This, I, I think this is the only spot we didn't really run through. We got the grace. And I remember us getting the grace because this is the path we broke off of when we were on our way towards the bridge. or We just finished the Bridge of Sacrifice and we were on our way to Knight's Cavalry Round 2. And I remember we broke off the path right here. And then there's the tower where we got the Hand Ballista. Okay, so if it's not directly out right here in the open... have another look see from a top here okay these are the demi human ruins we know we don't need to go in there could be talking about this one I think I know exactly which one you're talking about okay so it's one that I was aware of but we just haven't done yet okay this is the one with the murder bear <laughs> We'll go ahead and clear this one, too. Because this one is also super short, the Earth Boar Cave. There's a Rune Bear boss in here that is bad news. But we can beat him. Especially with our badass shield. And badass shield ability. So don't run over this cracked rock. Do yourself a favor. And run around it. Pickled Turtleneck. So that's an item that I mentioned before. If you kill the turtles, they drop it. And uh, it increases your stamina regeneration. Well, let me, like, try to get it to break. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so if you run past it normally... Oi, big-ass rat. And oddly enough, when you drop down in there, that rat doesn't aggro you right away. It's crazy. It almost, like, gives you an opportunity to realize that you've fucked up and react quite forgiving because it happened to me the first time I'll tell you that hi sneaky sneaky bam how do I keep missing these rats man I don't get it God, all they were guarding was a golden rune we can't complain we gotta take every victory we get in every form that it comes in all right, lock on, lock on, lock on, lock on. Serves you really well in here. You see why. So let's pull them one at a time. You can shoot while crouched. It's amazing. I'll make short work of these guys, damn it. Are you serious? Come on. All right. I want to make more fire pots, because we have plenty of materials to make them. Looks like we got one more rat over here that's not giant, so we'll get him. There we go. And then for big rat, we'll pull him. You know what? No, I don't want to pull him. I want to get this big wind-up attack on him and do mega damage. We're two-handed today. Boom! I don't even give him the opportunity. Fuck that. Okay. Give me my rune. And yes, I recommend picking up as much cave moss as you can because you're going to want to craft lots and lots and lots of poison recovery items. And to give you a sense of where we came from, that's the drop down. This is where the floor crumbling would have dropped you. Okay, now... 
We have plenty of bolts. We don't have to be stingy with our bolts, so. See, the R1 of this flail is really nice. The light attack just hits right down in front of us. It won't miss them, but for some reason, when I try to do the guard counter, it does this big sweep that just kind of goes over there, directly over their body. Oh, more Kukris. Thank you. Those do a lot of damage. And as you can probably tell by now, we are going further and further down in this cave. There's lots of bones and stuff. Like, there's... Looks like bones of humans, because the skulls look rather human in nature and uh looks like the rats are eating a lot of the scraps but to me when i when i follow these bones and stuff it seems like whatever's at the bottom of this cave is dragging bodies just further and further down into this cave and just gorging on them at the bottom because look i mean there's even more bones down here now victims are being drugged down into this cave one after the other and devoured and nobody can hear their screams or find them I don't think you can use the wolves in this fight, but I'm going to try if you can. There's the rune bear. So, you can sneak this guy. Like, if we if we had sleep arrows, which we might. We do. Wow. So, you can actually use sleep arrows on the rune bear and put them to sleep and just keep charge attacking them. Like, it's an easy way to get rid of this guy. But in the event that that's not an option for you, I would like to try to show you guys what to do. So I'm going to use the wolves. They can help pull aggro. Wow. Um, terrible way to open the fight. So, ideally, if you're using a bleed weapon, I'm going to try to bleed this guy. So, let's try to get some consistent hits here. Now, the rule of thumb with the rune bear is stay behind them, because they hit directly in front of them, and they can kind of swivel around and spin with some of their attacks, but not always. And I recommend keeping your shield up at all times. Oop. And shield barricade, pretty helpful for us. That's a grab attack he just did. It's pretty devastating. Oh, wow. <laughs> he completely ignored my shield right there. That was weird. So I'm going to heal real quick. Goodness. I should be able to proc weed soon on this guy, I hope. Make things a lot easier, right? Get some big point of damage in there. Get my bubble. Wow. This guy doesn't give a shit, man. He does not want to bleed. No, no, damn it. He barely was able to get me, but thank God I have the bubble. <laughs> oh, wow. It. Do you see that? <laughs> So that was pretty insulting. It procced the bleed on the last hit when it didn't matter. That was uh, was a little bit irritating, but whatever. We still beat him. So there shouldn't be anything else. Just those two corpses. Let's go back to the entrance. So there's another another cave cleared, and with the rune bear, you probably saw like the whole time I was fighting him. You know, if you just kind of like stay. A little bit behind him, try to stay behind his legs, and he's got uh, very particular hitboxes and generally will not be able to hit you that much if you are right up near him. The only thing that is almost guaranteed to get you if you're right up in his business is the grab attack. A rainbow stone. Lucky me. So now... Okay, so that's... I guess that's the one that person in the comments must have been talking about it was on the way to the to the Erd tree sort of all right there's one more cave in particular i can think of that i really would like to try to cover and it's going to be up this way so i'm gonna go to the war master shack and we're going to head a little bit northeast and it's going to be the i can't remember what it's called i think it's called the the traveler's cave or something like that it's been minutes since I've been there. It's literally like right here. It's at the end of this 
second body of water that uh, from the lake. So we followed this body of water here, this little trail of the lake, and it took us to like the Patches Cave, and then it took us to the Murkwater Coast one where it sits a little bit up above on the cliff, and then it dead ends here at the Murkwater Catacombs, but it's not connected right here, so we're going to have to, from this grace where we are, we're going to have to take the road up here, and we're going to have to find a way to drop down safely, get down in there, and uh, I know there's bears around here that you need to watch out for, but ideally we're going to go through this water, avoid the damn octopus things, and we're going to get to this cave that's literally like right there. So... Let's get to it. And I'm just gonna cut through the woods here. Let's see, yeah, okay, okay. Um, we are very close to an excellent weapon that would probably be smart for me to pick up and show you guys where it is. You got this loner out here too, like this ring, this wandering like stone guy. He kind of isn't doing what the other stone guys do. Like, I don't know what the deal is with this thing, but like, the other ones always stand up and they have the glowy eyes. This guy's doing like, this sort of worm thing across the ground and he does not have the glowy eye. He's got like a normal eye. So, it's kind of strange. It's uh, another instance of like, the strangeness of when the, uh, what am I trying to say here? The strangeness, uh, and we're going to get this scared real quick, of when the the misbegotten was hacking away at the corpse that had the, uh, the shard on it. Nice. Got ourselves a somber stone. And I am going to crush this guy. Yeah, how'd that feel? Golden Val? <laughs> I ain't gonna help you against me, pal. All Knight's Cavalry, your ass. <laughs> yeah, give me that. <laughs> Alright. Golden Val is something we're gonna use immediately upon meeting the qualifications, because I'll show you guys what's so great about it soon. Golden Val is the Ash of War. Oh, wow, the, we got the, the Ash of War, not the Incantation. That's amazing. Shit, I'll put it on this freaking... I'll put it on this flail right now. Um, <clears throat> not to break composure and sound too excited, but Golden Vow is... Uh, it's good. It's real good. You'll see. Okay. I've never gone out here onto this thing. I've never... Check this. Oh my. I'm telling you, like I said, I find something new every time. Like, I have never gone behind there to see what's on the other side of that wall, and bam. What do you know? There was an item. Okay. There is an invader up here, I believe. I want to see if we can beat him, because he's not dreadfully difficult or anything, but he. He will kick your ass if you're not ready. I'll tell you that right now. If you're not like prepared, if you don't, if you're not ready to fight when he shows up, he's gonna he's gonna put his foot in your ass. So, and I like weaving in and out of these because like there are several of these big coliseum type buildings in the game in different locations. Let me grab this before he destroys me. Small red effigy. It's another multiplayer item, and so is that furled finger. All right, come on, Henricus. Get your ass over here. You ain't getting through the barricade shield, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not. Okay, get enough of these guard counters and hopefully we can get a repost on this guy, maybe? Yeah, he's probably gonna die first. Shit. Oh, the roll catch. <laughs> Right, and we got the hammer talisman. Let's take a look at this. So the hammer talisman enhances stamina, reducing attacks against blockers. It's really good for those annoying shield guys. I would say this item probably has better application in PvP than it does like regular multiplayer because you definitely don't need a special talisman to be able to deal with shield guys when it comes to just like 
PvE solo play. Like, I can give you guys a million ways to handle shield guys without using that talisman, but it does work. It's worth mentioning that if you do decide to equip that talisman, it, uh, it has its uses. So, a little bonus area. We got kind of off track. <clears throat> I just got sort of pulled in that direction because I knew that that guy was there. I knew that invasion event was waiting for us, but, uh... We're doing okay on time, so decided to to murder that guy. Okay, and now we're gonna head this way. What is that? A wild boar? Okay. I think he's aggroing on me too. So these fire slugs out here, they do respawn, so you can kill them if you want to, but there's lots of smoldering butterflies out here. This is another instance of when you're running through this field, just mash the triangle button, or whatever your interaction button is, so you can get these butterflies. And yes, the slugs are hostile. They don't like people. They will attack you. So now we need to go down. We need to go down, down, down. Um, before we do that, the item that I was talking about before I crushed this knight... There's a weapon I want to pick up over here, which I think... Yes, there it is. Excellent. Let's get a running start. Jump! Yeah! Nice job, Torrent. Bam. The Lance. The Lance is a great weapon. It is uh, very, very good. And I don't want to deal with this encampment right this second. There's a knight and a bunch of dogs down there. There are some items we can loot. I'm pretty sure there's a chest in there, too. But, let's see. Nope, I just want to follow the main road. I don't want to deal with any of this. Not right now. We can get it later. We're going to grab an NPC on the way there, though. Hello? Can you hear me? Help me. I'm stuck. Hello? Hello? Anyone? So this is Alexander. Oh, my stars. I'm so happy to see you. I am Alexander, also known as the Iron Fist. And as you can see, I'm stuck here. Please, can you help me out of this? My thanks. A thousand thanks. Just give me a good smack from the rear with something nice and big. And I'll pop clean out, I'm sure. Don't dally. No, there's no need to fret. I'm very well trained. Give it your all, I say. I love this guy. <laughs> I mean, I may not like his questline as much as Blyde's, but I really like Alexander's questline a lot. He's very cool. He's essentially like the Siegward, or the, the, the Siegmeier, onion bro of this game. Um, very much so. And... All you gotta do to get him out of the ground is just hit him a couple times. He's gonna groan like that. I mean, because clearly you're hitting him really hard with your weapon, but you know, just hit him till he comes out. And we get ourselves a free emote. I want to know how he got in there. Like, it looks like, based on the direction that he went into the ground and the way the dirt is pushed out, it looks like he was flung from this direction, like, through the sky and just cratered in there like that is hilarious to think about ah, well played good lady well played though that mighty wallop of yours almost spelt the end of me <laughs> ah, well i'm out now and that's what counts i thank you and as a token of my appreciation I'd like you to have this. And he gives you some exalted flesh, which is the consumable that raises your attack power. Once again, the pleasure is mine. I am the warrior jar known as Alexander. Iron Fist Alexander, in fact. I journey to the east, where I intend to further my education in the ways of war. And beyond these lands lie the scarlet rot blighted Kalid wilds and upon their southern edge is Redmain Castle 
in which a festival of combat is being held. I'd heard whispers of such festivities before. Doesn't the notion set your breast a flutter? <laughs> so he tells us that he's going to be heading eastward, which this is where he's going, into like the red area, but he's going to be like way the hell out here, like where Redmain is, and be on like this part of the map. I'm heading eastward to Redmain Castle on the southern edge of the scarlet, rot blighted Kaelid Wilds. I've heard there's to be a fest. Okay, and that's the end of his dialogue. He tells you he's heading out there for some festival, and he's training in the art of war, and because he is essentially the descendant of Onion Bro, I just call him Pot Bro. So, another nasty ass freaking octopus out here. Let's see if it's guarding anything. Bring your ass over here. Come on, you ugly son of a bitch. Yeah, that's it. No, he's not on top of anything. Okay. So there's no reason to fight this guy. There's nothing in it for us. Okay. So let's get back on the road. Don't need to kill this guy because we already have all of our shit. We have all of our flasks, but I'm going to do it anyway. So let's handle Pumpkinhead here. Grab this Grace first. There's an item on the bridge with Pumpkin Guy. Let's kick his ass. Not bad. That did okay damage. Stop that. Listen, man. I know you're having a bad time, but you need to just, like, settle down. Okay, we got a Sanctuary Stone. That is, like, almost guaranteed. They almost always drop the Sanctuary Stone. And I think there should be a Finger Reader Maiden over here, if I remember. Come on, game. Don't make a liar out of me. No? Okay. Maybe not right here. But for some reason, it looked familiar. Alright. What did that just say? I wasn't even paying attention. Let's go back over here. Let's see if we can get the prompt again. No? Okay. Fine. You won't be like that. So we're definitely going to follow Alexander's questline, like, 100%. We are definitely, definitely going to try to 100% his questline. Look, man, I'm not even trying to fight you this time. I'm just, like, trying to run through, so... Okay. Oh, it just says Limgrave. Alright, whatever. So where we're trying to get is down below. We want to go down there, where all those shitty octopus are, and then up there towards that cliff there is where our cave is going to be that we're looking for. Yep, there it is. You can see the torchlight near the entrance. Alright, let's get down there. Which is much easier than it looks. Hello, Mr. Merchant. Oh, dear. Am I... I... Terribly sorry. Uh, are you here as a customer? Maybe. Like pots? Yes. Alright, I'm gonna buy this. Because it looks very cool. We got ourselves a note. Flame chariots. Okay, yeah, sure. Give me. And then this one. Okay, this one we can do the poison arrows and all. Okay, great. Yeah, we definitely want that. Oh, I'm afraid of very little too. Yeah, right, man. You offered me more useful stuff than most of your kind. Flame chariots. Beware the fire monks' chariots bearing the faces of giants. A well-aimed blow to the chimney on top may prove effective, but opportunities for a plunging attack will be rare indeed. So this is not an enemy that we have encountered yet. Um, it's kind of strange to me that this item is offered in this particular spot, because we're not going to see one of those for... A minute, to be honest with you. Um, 
Well, it's good information to have, because as soon as we do encounter one of those guys, we'll be doing something about it. We'll be using that information. Gimme. Gimme. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Okay. Bears. Like I mentioned before. Shit. Alright. Half health. Not bad. Want these mushrooms. Always want the mushrooms. So, you don't really have to worry about the bears. Like, I would not prioritize clearing them out. Because they are weak. Like, they're easy to kill. See? They drop the hefty beast bone. But they don't drop, like, a shit ton of runes, you know? Like, I wouldn't call them, like, a viable farming method or anything. I want to clear these ones out. Because they're in the way. Shit. Come on. And they are kind of weak. <laughs> we have the sore seal, so... They're not, like, ultra dangerous to us. And I want these Trina's Lilies. And there's a bunch of gold-tinged excrement out here as well. So anytime you see that, 100% pick that up. So without... So this is where we were before. This is the... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's do this. Let's look for a nice spot to access the other body of water, which is going to be up here this way. So there's a very small section of, like, stone wall that kind of separates these bodies of water, but uh, we're not going to let it stop us. Yeah, this is where we're trying to get to. Yeah, see, it's like, it's almost like above it. Kind of weird. Not the easiest thing to figure out. But we did it. What's that? Okay, that's white wolf. Another group of wolves. Not worried about it at all. So as far as loot goes through here in this pond, there really is none. There's going to be like a couple items. Like I'm going to I'm going to scale both edges of this valley just to make sure we don't miss any of the items, but from what I recall, there should not be much of anything out here. So there's nothing on this side, but we will run over here and check here just to make sure. Okay, we got like an herba. Let's see if there's anything in these woods. It is dark through here. What the fuck. I hope that helps you guys a little bit, because I feel like I can see much better than you guys can. Like by the time I'm done rendering this and stuff like that, I feel like you guys probably can't see as well as, as I can on my monitor. But uh, I want to try to keep the visibility the best it can be for you guys. So nothing. You would think that there would be an item like kind of tucked away in between these pillars, but I guess not. That's okay. It's okay that there's not. I know for certain that there is an item up this way though. Let me check behind these pillars just to make sure. Okay, doesn't look like it. And you can take that spring back up if you don't want to cover this by the time you're already down here. But there should be like, like a like a campsite up here, a guy sitting in a chair. It's all coming back to me. Where is it? Ah, here we go. Yes, 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 I remember. <laughs> Damn it. I remember the guy sitting here at the campfire with the item on him. <laughs> the turtleneck meat. Great. So that should pretty much be the very edge of this place. Let's go up here. Just for good measure. Make sure there's nothing else that uh, we can miss. Alright, good. With that, we can do the cave. Ah, 
High Road Cave. Okay, not the Traveler's Cave. I don't know where I got that name from. It is called the High Road, the High Road Cave. Uh, this one, in particular, is on the trickier side. It is... Uh, I would rank it easily in the top three most difficult caves in Limgrave. And it's not necessarily because the enemies in here are so strong. It's not about that. It's more so because of, like, the positioning of the enemies. Like, they are they attack you in groups, and they're in places that make it easier for you to get overwhelmed or fall to your death. So I'm going to do my best to try to walk you guys through this cave the smart way, or the way that makes sense. So this first room is going to be wolves, and then as we progress further into the cave, they go deeper and deeper down. Like, we're going to be going through the, the center, and then just kind of exploring the side rooms, but... We have one wolf in front of us, and then there's one in there. And same thing applies with these wolves as, like, all the other ones out there is... Holy shit. This crossbow is amazing. <laughs> Alright. Um, there is going to be, like, an alpha somewhere in here that is stronger than the others. Oh, yeah. Eat shit. Okay. And if you, again, the bushes and stuff... They could be hiding in the bushes, you never know. Use your lock-on button. Shit. Didn't even see you. He scared the shit out of me. Get this here. Alright, let me run over to that room that they were tucked away in. Okay, that one's dead. Alright. So now let's go back this way. Shield up. Ah, yes, here's the white one. Kill the small fries. They die in, like, one hit. That's amazing. It looks like he's the only one left in here. According to Lock-On. Alright. Well, that was easy. And a golden rune. Alright. So now, just like I mentioned before, we're going to start platforming our way down, and yes, be wary. <laughs> if you do not hit the right platform, if you don't fall correctly, you 100% will die. Okay. Uh-oh. It's a split. Um, We'll go this way. Good thing we went that way first. I guess that's one of the more exciting parts about doing this playthrough is uh, I don't remember all of these caves and stuff by heart. Like, you just can't. The game is way too damn big to be able to memorize everything by heart. But uh, keeps things nice and uh, refreshing, you know? Shit. Okay, I'll aim for the one that I can hit. Oh man, that looked like it hurt. Super satisfying. Okay, what do we got going on here? Looks like this was probably inhabited by, like, bandits or something like that. Or maybe soldiers that got driven into this cave because they got overrun out on the field during battle, maybe. I don't know. Something like that. And then it looks like the wolves got to them. So let me do this little side path here first. Probably dead ends. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, and this cave is not super long. I mean, it definitely, definitely goes deeper than this. Oh, I thought you were going to trap me, huh? You think I'm going to get got? Ah, here we go. Very nice. They give us three of those. Shit. So let's do this. Use a fire pot for this guy. There we go. Yeah, yeah, because he probably would have been problematic. I'm so glad these wolves die in one bolt, man. Like, that is... Just prime. And then, where they are down here, the path would have inevitably led us down here. If we had kept following it. So, that's why I went up around this way first. It gave us uh, a vantage point where we can get the drop on these guys. 
Okay. Lock on button. That's what you hear me doing if you hear the clicking. If it's uh, picking up the click on my microphone. Okay. Yeah, all right. Not bad. So now we're going to now we're going to start getting into like the parts with the bats. And these bats are not going to be like stupid difficult like the ones out there in Fort Ferreth where we were. Like these are just regular ass bats. They're not anything special. They're just as weak as the ones that you would encounter out in Limgrave. But uh you just have to know where they are. Like you really need to keep your eyes peeled. Um if you don't have access to the lantern, you know, by all means bring a torch down here. But uh I'm gonna make use of our crossbow, man. Nice. Okay. Doesn't work quite as well as uh, against the wolves. They have a little bit more health and defense. Drop down. I think there's. Yep, there's a bat over by the corpse. Okay. And the platforming is a little. Oh, God. Shit. I'm really trying to use my shield, bro. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys are going to have to forgive me. I uh, Maybe I'm just really sleepy or something, but I feel like I'm really playing like ass tonight. I don't know why. I feel like and normally I would not have any kind of trouble in these situations, but uh, I'm like ultra sloppy in this episode. I feel like... Just getting the shit kicked out of me. Okay. Well, that didn't work. Um, it's okay. We'll hit that guy with a kukri or something. Nope. I don't think so. I'm gonna shoot these guys before they actually fly. I don't care if it takes two. I'm not being stingy. You know what? No. Here's what we're gonna do, actually. Bam. Just for you, man. Fucker. Alright. Because he's he's a problem. Like, that one that's out there on the ledge, like, you have to jump out there to get to him, and he's gonna aggro you before you can do anything to kill him. Like, when you're trying to smash those two, he ends up flying over and ruining your day. That's what happened to me the first time I did the cave. So, these ones that are kind of floating out here on these pillars that you would have to platform to, firebomb them arrows, something. Just get rid of them before you actually go down there and loot that item. And uh, here's where it gets kind of tricky. This water is very deceptive. Like, it's it's hard to tell where you can and can't drop down on some of these watery parts. So, oh my god. Oh my god. Anyway, um... I usually try to pull these two over here into the cave because there's more room and you're not near a fall. So, highly recommend pulling them in here where uh, you just have more room to move around and can kind of kill them one at a time, like what I just did. And then you have some octopi. Nice! Man, we're getting like, I'm telling you, <laughs> it's good to cover this cave. Uh, before you go into Stormvale and do all that shit, because there's good stuff in here, man. We're getting upgrade stones and everything. Nice. It's payday, too. Golden runes. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to drop down. And... You know, like I said before, it's uh, it's a little bit wonky. It really doesn't look like you can drop down right here. It looks like you're just going to straight up die, but there is, like, a ledge right here at the bottom. So be very, very cautious with your footing right here. Like, there is going to be a little bit of, uh, a little bit of good judgment involved with where you jump here. So we dealt with all the ones that were on the platforms and stuff. There really shouldn't be any bats left, not that I know of, but regarding this badass curved sword, the Shamshir. So I like this sword a lot. It's uh, D in strength, D in dexterity. It's not like overpowered or anything. It's not like a disgustingly powerful weapon to have in the beginning of the game, but I like the description. 
curved sword with a thin blade of ample length, light of weight despite its larger size. Its slicing attacks come in rapid succession. A devastatingly powerful weapon in the hands of a skilled swordsman. So, this thing ends up scaling with dexterity as you continue to level it up, but I like having a curved sword on me at all times. Like, it's just good to have. And it's got kind of like this weird sort of dancer technique. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I will likely end up leveling this thing up because pretty sure you only need regular smithing stones to do that. So, I'll probably end up using it. And I like it much better than, you know, like the falchion or any of the, the regular curved swords that are just normal. Um, this is what we're going to do for this part. Get a running start. Jump. And then we'll jump up into the waterfall. And then... This should... Okay, yeah. This is where the boss is. Okay, okay. So, without dying, let's backtrack a little bit, and should be able to make that jump. Let's try. <laughs> Can't use torrent in here, so <laughs> if it doesn't look like your character can jump it, uh, don't. Okay. What's up, bitch? Man, y'all are dead. What the hell happened? They got big ass, like, curved swords. Wonder what killed them. Wow, certainly couldn't be that, right? Giant octopus hanging from the ceiling? Nah. Alright, let's do this only because they're available I like the kukris might even bleed him there we go oh one more would have done it man <laughs> don't matter he's dead Wow, that was mega easy. Like, the Kukri is a wonderful item. Let's make sure there's not two, right? I swear, man, it looks like that guy could just wake up at any minute. Like, they don't look dead. It looks like they still have skin and stuff. They don't look decomposed. Creepy. Yeah, man, this looks like a trap if I've ever seen it. It looks like they're all just going to stand up at once and swarm you. Alright. That, ladies and gentlemen, was not worth all that trouble. But, I'm glad we got the item anyway. So now, let's go worry about the boss. We'll get our little bugs, and pick them up every time you see them. Let's see what we're dealing with. Let's get the, let's get the puppies ready. Oh, it's just a fire goal. Okay. Well, that's easy. You guys already knew what to do with these guys. It's just cake. Oh, oh. Watch out for that area of effect. And then when he pulls it out of the ground, he does it again. Wow, he's already halfway dead. That's funny. <laughs> we'll get our bubble going, just so nothing funky happens. And the bubble really is a safety net, I'm telling you. Like, Once you get your Flask of Wondrous Physique, the bubble is going to be such a wonderful thing to use. Now this fight's over. Okay, we get the Blue Dancer Charm. Let's take a look at this before we leave the dungeon. Raises attack power with lower equipment load. So it's like, uh, what was that thing called? Flynn's Ring in Dark Souls 2? You could relate it to that item. The same kind of property. And then look behind these because we are 
efficient Souls players. Well, I haven't been this episode. I feel like my playing is just trash in this episode, but I'm glad I was able to cover a lot of content in this episode because I know there were several of those caves that we had been passing up and uh, I wanted to be able to come back and cover them at some point, but I'm glad that we are entirely caught up now. We basically have done every single cave that I passed up and uh, I'm happy about that. So let's do this. Screw these things. We don't want to fight them because they're just not worth the trouble they cause. I want up. Well, hi there. I don't need you. You get to live for now. I don't bear the same hatred towards those things as I do the uh, crystal lizards. Like, I... I think they play the same role, they're essentially the same thing, but I don't know, I I don't feel as compelled to kill them. It might have something to do with the fact that they just keep coming back. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We will end this episode right here at this grace, and I'll do a quick map review before we end, just to keep everything nice and organized. So, we have spent... The majority of our time here in Southern Limgrave. And what I consider Southern Limgrave is like everything on this side of the Bridge of Sacrifice. So we have basically done all of this. Like, I don't think there's a single thing I missed through here. We should have pretty much 100% of this area. Except for this. We need to go to Castle Morn, which is like the big boy legacy dungeon for this chunk of the map. We started with Central Limgrave up here. Everything surrounding the lake. We have done damn near everything up here. Like, we, there are some Everjail bosses that we need to fight and stuff like that, which we'll do that in the next episode. We're going to go fight this one, actually. We're going to use Blide to help us. But what I really need to do is I need to comb through a bit of this area because you'll notice there's, like, there's no graces through here or anything like that. We're going to go do this body of water type area that's near the Church of the Third Church of America. And there's a big rune baron here, but we're going to beat his ass. There's like a huge fight between him and these wolves. It's really cool. It's it's awesome to watch. But we're going to go clear through that. We're going to scale up through some of these uh, here. And then I know there's an item out on the cliff right here on the beach. It's a, it's a really cool sword that scales with our cane. We'll probably do that cave in the next episode that spits us out here on the ocean. And I think you enter it right here on these cliffs somewhere. But we're staying away from the red zone. We're not going to go up into Kaled. Not yet. We're not ready for that. Um... But yeah, the next episode, we will spend uh, doing most of this stuff, like just scaling through here, and we might find like a quick dungeon or two, and then I think tomorrow's episode is probably going to be the one that allows us to finally go here, and we're finally going to go crush Castle Morn. It's going to be really exciting. I'm happy about it. So that's the plan. In the next episode, we'll be focused on this area up, up here near the Mistwood Ruins, and uh, then we will do Castle Morn after we clear most of this stuff out. So, thank you guys so much for joining me on today's episode of the Elden Ring in-depth playthrough. I've been your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and I will catch you guys in the next video.